So let's talk about how ridiculous these sanctions are, right? I mean, sanctions, of course, put in place to harm Russia, but of course have destroyed the Western world, have destroyed most of Europe and the United States. Yes, but the government is taking this one step before total destruction for its friends and buddies. Basically, big money, big business is not necessarily going to be harmed by sanctions because sanctions are useless. Bloomberg today reporting that the U.S. government is actually asking big banks to keep working with Russia so that the economy doesn't collapse. Now, isn't that an admission that san sanctions are a decorative sham, only made to let politicians grandstand? I would say this is a damning admission of that. Look at from this story from the Bloomberg article today, which, by the way, is very hard to find. Bloomberg has it hidden on their uh, main page. Even if you search it, you have to search specifically the title. I found it very hard to dig this up. So you mean for if you go to reason, if you go to Bloomberg and you just simply search Russian sanctions and banks, this story you won't find does it. not come up. You have to specifically search the title, or I had to search for because I saw other articles were summarizing this, but not for some reason hyperlinking. It's so amazing. when Why? I went to go look for it, I had to search for either direct quotes or the people quoted in this. It's amazing. Why would Bloomberg hire reporters then to write stories like this if they're literally going to suppress them? You know, um, well, them. we're about to see why, because this is damning on the part of the government. Uh, so here's what the article says. It says this exchange, which we're going to show you in a second, puts on display how the country's largest banks are caught in the push pull between the Biden administration and Congress on sanctions. Behind the scenes, the Treasury and State Departments have urged banking giants, including J.P. Morgan and Citigroup, to keep doing business with certain strategic Russian firms, according to people familiar with this source. Now, Bloomberg says that this is to avoid mass starvation. Okay. okay. This is what we've been saying too, right? But it's nice that a Bloomberg reporter is actually validating that this is something that could happen. And that the White House sanctions. is saying and that the White House is saying that it's it could be mass starvation, right? I mean, this is Well, the well, we're going to get to that. So Bloomberg is positioning this as a Congress versus the Biden administration type thing. But the Russian sanctions put in place this year were done so by the president under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. So the sanctions are coming from the president. Congress is trying to take some credit for it, but mostly by showboating. Um, but then the Biden administration is secretly sort of undermining their own sanctions for their friends so that big business doesn't fail. Does this make any sense? Listen to Bloomberg's explanation. What are we seeing in terms of is this the Biden administration versus Congress? Yeah, I think in some ways it really does feel like that for these banks. You know, just a couple of months ago, um, all of the big bank CEOs were on the Hill in front of Congress and they faced a lot of pushback for continuing to do business in Russia. And um, a lot of folks were really calling for stronger sanctions, wanting these banks to just do a wholesale exit. Um, and now what we've learned is no, actually, you know, behind the scenes, Treasury and state are really asking these banks to continue to bank certain firms. There's very, um, very specific industries that they're really looking at, um, but they want to see you know, energy prices and food prices stabilize worldwide. And so they're asking these banks to step in where they can. It's a pretty complicated issue, right? Because it's not just broad sanctions that are making things difficult, but really individual policies that might also be making compliance quite hard. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. You know, a lot of the cases, um, these are not companies in Russia that are actually sanctioned, but the banks have just done such a broad-based pullback, um, partly because of their own internal risk and compliance departments, and that's really what you've seen kind of slow things down. And so um, that's where Treasury and State are trying to say, no, guys, look, this company, these industries really are not under sanctions. We want to see you step in here. We don't want to see a broad-scale pullback. They're trying to avoid things, you know, like mass starvation. They want energy prices to come down. They're trying to really contain some of the adverse impacts that the sanctions regime has had around the world. So then the president and Congress are giving us this media runaround saying we don't need Russia, right? We can hit them below the belt. We're too good for them. But then that's just tough talk. And then behind the scenes, they're running to their big banking friends and saying, 
you can still work with Russia. In fact, we need you to. Uh, this was made clear in September when Representative Brad Sherman, a California Democrat, grilled J.P. Morgan CEO da Jamie Dimon, and he said that he had proposed legislation that would close these loopholes that lets the banks continue to work with Russia, which were, this is not a loophole, that was left there in purpose, purpose. Yeah. for their friends. Right. Um, and then Dim Dimon said, uh, you know, well, actually, these are not loopholes. I wouldn't put it this way. This is an amazing display of chest thumping. Take a look. House of Representatives in May passed my bill, the Russia and Belarus Financial Sanctions Act, which would block that loophole. Unfortunately, the Senate remains somewhat dysfunctional. So the question is, are you going to exploit that loophole? But I'll be more specific. Uh, Mr. Diamond, has J.P. Morgan cut its ties with Gazprom and uh, Vital? So I, well, first of all, I wouldn't call these loopholes. The American government, the Secretary of Treasury. I, 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 they, please they, don't respond. Uh, I didn't ask you to respond to my editorialization. He's like, they are letting me do it. And he's like, don't say that. To Gazprom and Vital. We, we are following the instructions of the American government as they asked us to do it. So I, you are not, I think you, so the answer is, job. Mr. Diamond, it's a yes or no question. You have not cut your ties to Gazprom and Vital. Do you continue to own a major stake in the Russian bank, uh, Spear, uh, Spear Bank? No, we do not own a stake in Spear Bank. Uh, I think that's in a Thank mutual you. fund somewhere. And we've, Let, we've materially cut I, out some of the I, I hope you would cut Gazprom. all your ties to Gazprom and Vital and let me uh, go on to Citigroup. Have you cut your ties with Luke Oil and Vital? I just had one other thing. I don't think... Uh, not on my time, you can't. No one is doing... Reclaiming my time, no Mr. Time Diamond. Time belongs to the profit. gentleman from California. All right, so you see her face there? I clipped it because I couldn't believe she did that because he's about to say, no, we're doing what you, the government, is allowing me to do. It's not a loophole. I'm doing exactly what's allowed, and I'm going to explain that. And then her face is like, we're not going to let you say that. It was, it's such a condescending smirk that I have to play it for you again, so I clipped it. Nope. Can't say that. I just can't get over. So, I mean, when we were talking about the story earlier today, the idea that the Treasury Secretary under Janet Yellen and the Biden administration goes to Jamie Dimon and these other big bankers and says, quiet, shh, here's what we want you to do. Continue to do business with Russia. Don't talk about it publicly because we need you to do business with Russia. Otherwise, there will be mass starvation. There will be a global economic disaster. And so these representatives get to stand up there and be like, well, we hope that you don't work with Russia. Yeah, these you know, loopholes. You found like, a loophole. It's all they're doing is chest thumping, like I said. Now, earlier in the ex exchange, Representative Sherman had said ESG funds, which are made to invest in the planet, are the opposite of investing in Russia. So we hope you don't do that and you're just doing the ESG funds. ESG funds are stupid bullshit. Um, <laughs> they are a scam. We've talked about this before. So Sherman's statement that investing in Russia is the opposite of what is good is political mumbo jumbo. And Sherman was an accountant at one point. So I find those statements even more unacceptable because they are not quantifiable. Um, what Diamond is saying here is that he's doing what the government allows and instructs. And if they were asking him to do something they didn't like, you better believe that he would call up his army of lobbyists. They're not going to do something that hurts them for anyone's politics. The other way around, well, actually. That's the thing. When you look at these sanctions, if it has something to do with them losing money, then they're going to work with Russia. If it has to do with the regular person's, our lives, people can't heat their houses and stuff. We're going to keep the sanctions. When it comes to us, they don't care. When it comes to their pocket, their bottom line, they all of a sudden give oh, many course. shits. They've got shareholders they've got to take care of, and they only care about their bottom line. Yes. Only. Uh, now, you know, the quote that Bloomberg uh, presents to us from an attorney who specializes in trade sanctions makes it even more clear that this is congressional theater. He says, Congress needs to understand this. The U.S. government has not imposed a comprehensive embargo with Russia. There's still pockets of business that are allowed, says this person. He continues, the Treasury Department will continue to have meetings to educate banks on those pockets of allowable sanctions, especially in the humanitarian space. So while you, little peon citizen voter, 
have to figure out how to not collapse your own finances during wartime economy, the banks don't have to worry about. They have government advisors helping them not lose. Uh, Bloomberg says that the Treasury and the State Department officials have called on lenders to continue to offer, offer basic services such as U.S. dollar settlement, payment transfers, trade finance offerings. Um, so, you know, while the media is telling you about all the like little piddly Russian businesses that are suffering because sanctions are so hard and tough, what they're not telling you is who gets to skip them, right? So you'll see like big posts about how this Russian Instagrammer no longer can make money because of sanctions, right? And right. so we're celebrating this, but the big banks don't have this. So once again, it is the government deciding who are the winners and the losers. So if you have a company that deals with Russia that's too small, Screw you, you lose. But the big boys, no, they're going to be fine because the government's walking them through it, uh, which proves just to, once again that they're going to choose the winners and the losers. It probably is not you. And the sanctions are just a big load of bullcrap show. Yeah. And they'll, they'll finance they'll finance all of these members of Congress's campaigns. They will continue to shovel money. It would be interesting to see Jamie Dimon say, well, Mr. Sherman, um, Maybe you should disclose to this committee how much money uh, we've donated to your campaigns over the years. Would you but like to? He, no, but that's the reason they shut him down. I mean, pretend to like. Put on a theater. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, no. Not on my time. You're not getting away with this. Get away with what? Telling me what we are actually doing. You want to discuss the rules without discussing the rules. Well, what's amazing is that he can't, won't let him answer the question. Like he, he knows. Oh, he's about to tell. I don't know, Philip. I know it's throwing you under the bus if you're able to grab that sound again. I thought it was amazing because he's. He's literally asking him the question, are you using these loopholes? And Jamie Dimon's telling him, well, these aren't loopholes. I, I was asked by the Treasury Secretary to, to use these, these back doors to Russia. Otherwise, we will have mass starvation and global collapse. Watch. And he's like, not on my dime. House of Representatives in May passed my bill, the Russia and Belarus Financial Sanctions Act, which would block that loophole. Unfortunately, the Senate remains somewhat dysfunctional. So the question is, are you going to exploit that loophole? But I'll be more specific. Uh, Mr. Diamond, has J.P. Morgan cut its ties with Gazprom and uh, Vital? So I, well, first of all, I wouldn't call these loopholes. The American government, the Secretary of Treasury. I, 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 they, please they, don't respond. Uh, I didn't ask you to respond to my editorialization. Just a specific question. Have, oh. <laughs> have you cut the ties to Gazprom and Vital? We, we are following. Oh, we're f yeah. Sorry. Yeah, um, it's amazing. We, we have to call them loopholes, so please don't respond. And his condescension, um, that is probably one of the most annoying videos I've seen in a long time. Yeah, and that's his Senator Rennick, and we got a good we got a good show. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, uh, did you hear him say? Did you hear him say after he was finished? He's like, and I think they're doing a good job. Like he kind of slid that in there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you heard it over the over the argument. Right. And so it takes the wind out of these representatives who want to play tough and pretend they're really coming down on the banks when the banks are there saying in the open, you guys let me do this. So <laughs> you told this us to is do allowed. This. You told us to do this. Uh, yeah, that's why we knew. Remember at the very beginning of all of this, with all the sanctions, we're like, hey, all these banks are still in Russia. Remember, we were reporting it here on the show. They're yeah. like, oh, McDonald's is leaving, you know, all these. But all the banks are still in Russia. All these, they're like, you what know are what that reminds me of? Like, I have a child who's six and a child who's 12. And sometimes I pretend the older one has a strict bedtime when he doesn't in front of the six-year-old. <laughs> where I'm like, everyone's got an early bedtime tonight. And then I look at my son and I'm like... Wink, wink. Yeah. And he's like, what? What did I do? And I was like, you're going to bed early, right? Like, this is exactly like <laughs> what the shit and I And then the younger kids are like, oh, good. The They're older like, one's going to bed everyone's too. Everyone's going to bed on it, right? And so anyone who buys this is like on the level with my six-year-old at this point.